And you're watching, I hope, Nardwar's Video Vault. And that was my interview with Kurt Cobain and Nirvana from January 4th, 1994. The audio commentary. If you want to check out the full version, it's on YouTube without me talking. Now, let's transport ourselves to Bobby in Richmond, Virginia at Vinyl Conflict Records. Hey, what's up? This is Ice-T, and this is a message for all the people that shop at or want to shop at, you know, the punk metal record store, Vinyl Conflict Records, okay? They're not going to be opening right now just for your safety and health purposes until all this blows over. They're thinking about you, all right? But in the meantime, they're going to be doing mail order orders, you know what I'm saying, through Discogs and local curbside pickup, all right? So that's Vinyl Conflict Records, all right? Bobby runs it. He's a good man. He's making sure everybody stays safe. Let's stay safe first, then we're going to rock out, all right? Vinyl Conflict's in the building. A quarantine message. Peace. Who are you? Hey. I'm Bobby Egger. Uh, I own Vinyl Conflict Records in Richmond, Virginia. And Bobby, Ice-T said your name. Thank you, Cameo. Thank you, Cameo. Ice-T said your name. That was so cool. <laughs> I just kind of threw that one into the wind and it worked out. And it was it was so cool. It was like an uh, awesome kind of uplifting thing. At Last summer was in spring and last year and now is like a really tough time for everybody so that was like just really an awesome thing that worked out it was really cool to get to work with them on that and you are bobby from vinyl conflict records from richmond virginia and you were deep deep in a residential area could you show yes. us the residential area that you're in right now you're really deep Absolutely. And give a comment like who lives above like you're really deep in the neighborhood so i used to live above up until a couple of years ago um but now uh, we have a friend upstairs named Griffin who lives there. Uh, I, there's a bunch of band people in the neighborhood. I'm not going to dox them, but there's a bunch of cool people from Richmond bands you've heard of that live at different places. So here's a little uh, spread of the neighborhood. I'm going to give you a full 360 and end on the shop. So this is totally residential. And then it's us. Now, what I'm curious about the building, what's the history of the building? The building, uh, it's from the 1800s uh, i couldn't say the exact year it was built um it was part of a row home at some point that portion burned down uh now it's a parking lot um it was originally a dry foods goods store uh in the 1800s and it's been a number of things it's become been a laundromat it's been a tattoo parlor it's been a bunch of office spaces it's been a barber shop it's been more things than I, I actually know about <laughs> but it's 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 always been a business this has been like a retail space that actually funny you ask I have a photograph of it from the year 1908. my goodness. How did you find can, that photo? How did you come across there, that? There is a Richmond kind of historian society and they stopped by and they gifted it. Check it out. We're going to take it outside and compare notes. And again, who are you again? You are Bobby from? I'm Bobby from Vinyl Conflict. All right. Boom. Is that crazy or what? That's amazing. It's like 1908 versus 2021. Now, the customers out front of that building, your shop, mm -hmm. are they into trading something in? Do you get good punk trade-ins from the neighborhood? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we get, we get, it's cool. Richmond's got a lot of record labels too. So, you know, it's a lot of local labels bringing stuff in. But, uh, you know, a lot of people from bands and just the scene for years. Uh, some people like to sell their collection and some people like to, you know, kind of trade up and get new records. And I actually remembered at the last second, I have another photograph that predates. This is from the 1800s. You ready? Wow. 
Whoa. <laughs> At what shop was that? That was the dry food store. And Did if any see? of your relatives come by? I haven't met any relatives, but it says Sours, uh, which is like a vanilla factory. Um, A.W. Browning, I assume, was the, the actual store. And your font of Vinyl Conflict is very similar, isn't it? Actually, that's interesting. It kind of is. <laughs> yeah. So, Bobby from Vinyl Conflict Records from Richmond, Virginia. In Richmond, Virginia. Uh, what about Customer Appreciation Day? Like you stepped out yes. in the neighborhood. Has the neighborhood always been the neighborhood? Like way back when was it a neighborhood? <laughs> Oh, yes, it's always been a neighborhood. Um, I'm doing a thing right now. Thank you. Wait, hold on. Check this out. My neighbor's, uh, he's bringing by a gift for us. <laughs> it's his old license plate. <laughs> I'm doing a live stream right now. I'm sorry, man. <laughs> you got a uh, neighborhood. He's giving me his uh, rest in peace doom license plate. <laughs> oh, amazing. What cool neighbors. Thank it's you. MF doom. That's yeah. amazing. <laughs> That's cool. I'll probably go up in the store. Your question, has it always been a neighborhood? Yes. It's 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 consistently been a residential neighborhood from the entire time of its existence. Um, the and customer appreciate. Hmm. Well, I was going to say customer appreciation day. The people that must be into that in the neighborhood, did they come down to hang out and have a good time? Absolutely. So customer appreciation day was a concept we created in replacement of record store day, which is something we don't do. Um, and it was kind of an idea. I was turning the idea of where like record store day is for the customers, but it's kind of a, a shopping holiday, if you will. I wanted to do something was the same concept where we're celebrating the customer, but I wanted to celebrate the customer. So we give them a free concert. Uh, we have some food trucks. Uh, I always got some sort of carnival game. We had like moon balances or like the, you know, the, the riding bowl or a couple of different things over the years. We had dunk tanks and stuff like that. Um, do giveaways and all sorts of fun stuff. And we're speaking right now to Bobby from Vinyl Conflict Records in Richmond, Virginia, a record store. If anybody has any questions for Bobby, throw them in the chat at Nardwar Serviette Twitch. And also, in the course of this interview, Bobby, if anybody sees anything, they can actually order that stuff, right? Pretty much, they can order Absolutely. everything. Absolutely. Except maybe your own personal cash, but people can order the stuff in the racks. How would they do that? Yeah, I mean, there's a number of ways. Uh, we have a, most of our stuff that's listed online is uh, through a website called Discogs. Um, we have our own page on Discogs, and I'd say probably 90% of our stock is uploaded and orderable. And if you don't see it on there, I would recommend dropping us an email. Uh, the easiest way to reach us would be info at vinylconflict.com. And just, you know, tell us what you're looking for. We can get back and send photos or let you know about prices and stuff. Um, you know, in the case that hasn't sold already, we're happy to mail order anywhere in the world. Uh, we ship five or six days a week. Um, we love mail order. Mail orders, like, you know, our locals are the heartbeat, but, you know, everybody's, everybody's involved. And this is a shop that, you know, it's for everyone. Brandon, the former owner, rest in peace. Yeah. He played drums in Career Suicide, a Canadian band, a Canadian band. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he, he, he was in so many, so many bands. He opened the shop in the year 2008 um, and ran it. I took over in 2012. Brandon played drums and he was a, he was a municipal waste as well. Uh, and then Government Warning, Waste of Time, Direct Control, Southside Stranglers. Uh, I'm going to forget so many because there's so many incredible ones. But yeah, no, he definitely played on, uh, I want to say it was the Attempted Suicide album by Career Suicide. Canadian content and American content right now with Bobby yeah. from Vinyl Conflict Records. And Bobby, do you have any specialized, oh, maybe just move the camera a bit. Your eyes are a tiny bit, oh, just a bit more headroom. Do you have any specialized 
vinyl. Like, you know, there's five inches, there's seven inches, there's eight inches. Could you tell the listeners about all the different sizes of vinyl? Because people may not be aware there are tons of vinyl sizes. There's so many sizes. And so I guess we'll start with the smallest that I have on hand. Um, let's see. Yeah, this will work. Here we go. Um, this is the smallest size I have on hand at the moment. It's a five inch. It looks like it would be a CD and it'd be really easy to pass by. Um, and sometimes I actually find them in CD collections. Um, so this like is very short. There's only like one track. It's usually fast on each side. Is it so five 33 inch. or 45 RPM? Uh, I would have to assume these would probably be 33 to be able to fit the song. I would assume a five inch at 45 would be almost no content. Unless it was a grindcore record like this one is by the Hate Waves. Um, $3 if you'd like it. <laughs> so, yeah, there's five inches. Uh, I have seen six inches. And off the top of my head, if I have that one, I know. Six, seven's the standard. Seven is your, like, average record size. And these played between 45 and 33 RPM. A lot of punk rock and heavy metal bands will do 33 to pack more songs on it. But traditionally, it's 45. What do you think about the colored vinyl? Like different colored vinyl. I know the band Perfect Pussy, Meredith, put her own blood in the record. Have you got she versions of that? What can you say about putting blood in a record in a colored vinyl? If people are watching, like putting blood in a record, how do you make colored vinyl? And... How do you make blood colored vinyl? Well, so that was actually her blood. Uh, I do know about that record. Um, she was using clear vinyl. The record was clear. Sorry, I don't like that a little not just there. There we go. Um, I'm gonna wipe my screen too. Um, it was clear vinyl. Hold it. There we go. Uh, it was clear vinyl. In in the process of pressing, she actually was able to, I believe, use a vial that was included in the process. So some of them, just some of them, it's not all of them. It's a limited edition version. Have like a haze of, of red in it. Um, vinyl starts in like a little beaded form. It's not actually like a hard disc. Um, it comes in beads. I wish I had something to show. Uh, and when they do different colors and stuff, they include the different color beads. So typically it's a black puck. Uh, it's melted down into like a kind of a hockey shaped puck. And the process is done next comes the center labels and those are actually put on each side of the puck and it's squeezed down heated up and with the you know i'm not giving you the exact process but the uh, the master stamp will be the reverse of the record and it'll press into that um i told an abbreviated version of that there's more there's much more that goes to that but um there's different tricks you can do it to it. I wish I had pulled some better ones, but I bet I can find one while we're talking. Well, actually, so let's different. go. Let's go back to the different sizes of records. We showed a five sure, inch. Yeah. My pleasure. So I actually pulled one right here. Uh, this is still a seven inch, but this is called a flexi disc. I think you were talking about those before. So that's like a technically a different size, but uh, this used to come inside. Who made that one? Is that made by Eva Tone Sound Sheets? Who made that one? It should say Eva Tone oh. Sound Sheets on the bottom, probably. That's a wonderful question. I know this came from Pirates Press, but I don't know if they use Not Eva Tone. Okay. 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 So let's see. Going over here, I'm coming into my 10 inch section. So these are a little bit bigger. Ah, and another color vinyl, too. So. The Iron Monkey on the Man's Ruin label got some clear with the black. So the thing with the blood, it would have been similar to this. You see those black smears? That's what the blood would have looked like. If I had a copy of that record to show, but perfect pussy, perfect pussy record. Yeah, that would have had. It would have looked similar to that with with red picture disc, where the record is actually on the disc, on top of a photograph. Oh, sorry. The grooves are actually in the record. This is a Japanese band called The Willard. It's kind of similar play? to the jam. Do they skip a lot? Uh, I understand that the the older ones had a kind of a shoddier condition. I think they skip because sometimes you can't really see the scratches the same way you could on a regular disc. 
but it's essentially the same idea. Um, they're, di- they're clear discs with a, with a photograph in the middle. Um, I once wanted to figure out how, so I broke one in half and it's just a piece of paper. <laughs> Bobby, we have a question from Coyote and Coyote asks about, hey, Bobby, ever met Dave Brocky or have a Guar memory? And I was actually going to ask also about the Guar bar because isn't there a Guar bar in Richmond? There sure is. Yeah, there sure is. I did meet Dave Brocky. Unfortunately, I was never very close with him. Uh, not for any particular reason. I'm not from Richmond. I moved down in 2010. So uh, I had met him between going a couple shows. He had been to the store. Um, I've been in the same vicinity and I have talked to him before. He was just a really incredible person, really positive, lovely energy. You know, he kind of took the attention of the room wherever he was, whether it was just being at a restaurant or at a concert. He always was, you know, Really incredible, magnetic. Um, and Guar Bar is awesome. That's just downtown. Uh, they're back open. They have, you know, COVID rules, of course. They have a nice patio that people can eat outside at. Uh, really incredible place. I used to DJ there a couple of years ago. Like Super you, fun. You say it so normally, Guar Bar, but for people that aren't familiar <laughs> with that, like, what's a Guar Bar? That's amazing. The Guar oh. Bar, <laughs> it's, it's essentially completely decorated entirely just in, in, in guar everything uh it's completely guar themed all the drinks have uh you know uh fun nicknames the food has fun nicknames they're just playing heavy metal all the time seven days a week uh it's just a really great kind of place to hang out <laughs> On an aside, Hypercolor Toilet Seat says, I have a five-inch iron lung split at 33 yeah. RPM. 33. Okay, yeah. Yeah. I, w- I would think 45 might just be a bit fast to put enough songs on there. <laughs> Thank you, Chris Jordan. Chris Jordan. Dead serious. Yeah, man. Chris Jordan's awesome. That was <laughs> early Bobby, wasn't it? Oh my gosh. I mean, that was the start. That was the start. That was the that was the first thing ever. Uh he had a company called Wolfpack Skateboards at our local skate park. And he had a record label called Team J Bird. And his release he put out that might be the only release they put out was the Dead Serious first CD. And uh, that was really my first exposure to hardcore, like underground hardcore. I'd been to some punk rock concerts, but like, and I say concerts because they were bigger, but uh, that was the first exposure I got to go see like cool underground DIY bands at small clubs. And yeah, he had a cool uh, Wolfpack Skateboards was like the first thing to really just show me all of that. And I don't know, it's where I met a lot of friends I'm still friends with today who've gone on to do bands and so many other projects the whole crew dudes are still super talented and doing all sorts of stuff. It's really, uh, I feel really lucky to have been around that when I was a kid. (laughs) And we're speaking to Bobby from vinyl conflict records in Richmond, Virginia. And I was curious, the Vans skate park, Morgan, what did Morgan tell you about rock and roll and punk rock? Oh my gosh. Morgan Buenos. Uh, he worked at the skate park and he was just super, super, super supportive of me. Like, uh, what did he tell me about hardcore? Do you know? (laughs) Oh my gosh. He was just such a cool mentor. He definitely like passed me lots of music. Um, he, (laughs) there was a, there was a, there was a cheap skate. You could get cheap sessions at the skate park. If you were part of a, the skate team, an official team, and he had made one for all of his friends called anchor park. And, uh, I was just like, you know, 14 years old, but I was on the skate team and I got to go skate for like half price or something. (laughs) So that was pretty rad. Bobby, you are right now in your own store, vinyl conflict. So it's easy to find cool punk. How hard was it to find cool punk back in a day? Fear.com. What's the importance of fear.com? Fear.com was an intense one because at that time, I 
I don't think any of us of that age really knew the people who were involved in the site. It was just a, it was like a link that we were sending around to each other, but fear was a website. It was pretty much a listing. Um, like going on the, like going to a concert website, like whatever your local venue is. And it would just have a list of all the shows going on, but fear was everything for the Virginia DC, Maryland area. And it was user submitted. Uh, there was a moderators. And basically if you put something in that people uh, agreed that was actually happening, cause you know, there's a couple times we submitted fake shows cause we were kids. Those didn't go up. There's a moderator, but like uh, you could go on there and you could see anything happening. And honestly, it was everything from like big concerts, to, like nine 30 club, um, you know, like, like a huge rancid concert, but also down to like basement shows. And they would have like links to be like, they had the ask a punk at that time on there. Like they wouldn't post the website, but they'd have like a little email address or something. And you could find out about house shows through it. I mean, now that would probably not work so well, but at that point it was still pretty underground and you could like email someone for an address and not, compromise the space um so it was really cool i mean it was just such a wide area finding out about concerts in your own like hometown that you didn't even know about uh and just stuff like that it was really cool gina asked jhn ai mm-hmm. bobby what is your most memorable band that walked into vinyl conflict and i will also say daughtry Oh, that's a true story, man. That was wild. <laughs> I guess that's technically one of the more famous ones, but that one was an interesting story. Uh, Daughtry was playing at uh, the Altria Theater, which is downtown, which is a big, not opera hall, but a, a very large venue. Um, and uh, his road crew showed up first. And his road crew looked like a road crew. I was talking to him. They didn't even tell me who they were with. And I kind of asked him, oh, yeah, yeah, we got a show down at the Altria. And uh, everybody's being cool. I was like, oh, cool. Who told you about the shop? And they're like, oh, we're friends with the guys in Ann Beretta. I was like, okay, this makes sense. This is cool. And then he shows up. He kind of like walks in and he's like got like the big mega, like walkie talkie on his thing. And he's got like the earpiece in as if he was getting ready to perform and wearing like rock star clothes. And it was just like, you know. We're speaking here right now to Bobby from Vinyl Conflict Records. And if anybody wants Bobby to find a record and mail it to them for a price, check out Bobby's Discogs, which Nina will flash in the chat. But right now, if anybody wants to post a hardcore, what is your inventory? If somebody posts a record right now, could you possibly find it in the shop and mail it to them? Yeah, absolutely. So tag at Nardwar and I can ask Bobby if he has that you're generally punk hardcore metal what what exactly is in the store you know absolutely I could do a little tour of the shop if you like or I could just talk about it or well right now uh just right now we'll just see just as we begin the tour we'll see if anybody wants to find do you still have that masturbation 12 inch and can I have it uh, you totally could if I had it sold over the weekend. I'm super sorry. That one went fast. And also the addicts, Viva La Revolution. Mm, maybe. Joseph asks, again, this is Bobby from Vinyl Conflict in Richmond, Virginia. Addicts. The addicts, Viva La Revolution. Oh. Mm. Joseph asks if you have. I should be doing it this way so you can see how I'm looking for it. But uh, no, not there. It would additionally maybe be here. And then there's one more place that would be in the back, which customers are not allowed. But, you know, Nardwar, you're VIP. Um, oh, the back room. Colored vinyl. Yeah. Yeah. It looks like the addicts also sold them. Super sorry. Yeah. And this is all back stock duplicates and so on but thanks for looking anyways are the addicts oh i'm happy to are the addicts just out of curiosity what are the biggest sellers for punk metal indie in your store are the addicts that popular the addicts are quite popular i think that maybe was something we didn't get enough of and it happened to sell out um the addicts do sell quite well some of our biggest sellers 
I think hardcore titles are pretty popular with us. Uh, death metal titles, punk titles, um, like some of the biggest sellers, you know, over the last year. Uh, maybe we can go kind of tour it a little bit. Yeah, actually, why don't we start a tour right now? Why don't we start the tour? Let's start the tour. Without looking. So, go ahead. Yeah, I'm going to bring it over this way. So let's start with this wall. This is the entrance to the store from the door. This is my new arrival shelf. Um, this is the newest stuff that's kind of come in. I like to feature some of our newest titles that have come through. So here's some death metal, uh, undergong, decomposed, spectral voice, uh, faceless burial. This is the Dolly mixture, uh, double LP, which is kind of like similar to bands like Kleenex or Lilliput. Uh, they're from England, really incredible double LP reissue. Enforced, this is a brand new uh, album from a Richmond kind of crossover hardcore metal band, really incredible, just came out on Century Media. Um, this is Bad Example, they're from Alabama, I believe. And it's really cool punk. Uh, unfortunately, one of their members passed away this year and this is, came out afterwards. It has a really incredible zine with it that just kind of talks about the history of the band. It's, it's really sick. Uh, the new Drop Dead album, the new Drop Dead 2020, self-titled. Um, this is a cure bootleg for carnage visors. It's a track that came on the end of faith. I think on the cassette tape version. Um, this is a local rapper, young flexico. This is his new self-released full length called the new flexico album. Uh, Demolic and socio class. This is more death metal. And this is more, uh, I think kind of grind power violence. The new God's hate that's on uh, closed casket activities like har heavy hardcore. Uh, this is the anti Symex demos compilation, which just came out. Terminal Bliss, which is like members from Page 99 and uh, Mammoth Grinder and Suppressions, kind of power violence grindcore. And then the reissue of the Crucifix Dehumanization. So these are like kind of the newer titles that have, we're showcasing. And we change these weekly as we get new stuff in. One, four, five, one, eight, Smoketown Road. <laughs> oh that was the high is that high fidelity's address yes oh wow <laughs> at first i thought you pulled my dad's old house i was like what <laughs> yeah that's high fidelity man that was like the first diy record store i really got a chance to have involvement with uh when i was just back a kid going to the skate park and stuff it was across the street from vans um and they it was smaller than this store, but they had a huge back. It was like a, it was a modded out dentist's office. So all the rooms in the back, they gutted it all. And they used to have like crazy concerts in the back. Those are some of the first heart after the first hardcore show. Those are some of the second, third and fourth and, you know, 10th shows I went to probably every couple of weeks. Got to see some really incredible stuff there. Brace, worn thin, hate crimes. Yeah. Uh-huh. Desperate measures, striking distance. I got to see American Nightmare, so many bands, Kill Your Idols. It was cool. The early <laughs> history of Bobby from Vinyl Conflict Records in Richmond, Virginia. And again, you're watching Nardwar's Video Vault on Twitch with me, Nardwar, the human serviette, and Bobby from... Vi We're live! We're live, aren't we? We're live. Throw in a chat if you have any questions at Nardwar Serviette, and Bobby could find a record and mail it to you for a price. For a price! Yeah for a price oh, yeah. and also people can check out your discogs which is quite extensive and also yes. your instagram people can communicate through that absolutely yeah uh, for vinyl conflict i was wondering the turntables and cassettes can you show yes. some of the turntables or cassettes do you have any cassette decks I don't have, uh, I don't think I have anything working at, oh, I guess I got a cassette deck for the, it's what we use to play uh, cassettes over the shop speakers, but I don't have any for sale right now, but I'm happy to bust that out. This is what I got right here. When you make cassettes, like Fantastic Damage cassettes, yes. do people have cassette players or do they just buy the cassette with a download code because they want to support the band? Um. I would assume that probably happens. I don't think a lot of our cassettes came with download codes. So it was kind of for a, a 
the listening intentions. Uh, we did a lot of uh, local hip hop on a sub label called Fantastic Damage. And also the Vinyl Conflict label additionally had a bunch of releases as well. I think most of them are unfortunately sold out, but I might be able to pull out a thing or two. We did like Nicholas F and Michael he, Millions, Noah O. And Those Nicholas like some F, podcasts. he toured yes. with Tommy Wright the Third. He toured he sure with Tommy did. Wright the Third. Yes, he did. I wish I had gone on that, man. <laughs> that was that looked crazy. What yeah, about did... turntables? Can, do you have any turntables for sale? For sale? I just sold my last one, unfortunately. But I can show you. I have a listening station. I have a really nice Pioneer Direct Drive. This is like if, you, if you're in the store and you want to check something out before you buy it. You know, we have it set up through here. Um, listen to it on some audiophile Pikachu headphones. And then um, this is the other turntable. This is where we set up behind the counter. This is a Technics. What about 78s? Do you ever get anybody trading in 78s? You know, they lived in the neighborhood for a long time and they bring out sure, their sure, sure. 78s. It happens. We don't personally stock them here. There was a shop in town that did for a while and they unfortunately closed. So maybe we'll take a jump into it but unfortunately we don't get asked for them very often not not never but not frequently not frequently enough to maybe have a section the store is very small so we have to be very careful with our space i mentioned or you mentioned nicholas f but d'angelo is from richmond too hip-hop hip-hop mm -hmm. yeah there's a lot uh he's one of the big famous ones uh Oh my gosh, you're going to blank me. Do you have much go-go? Much go-go if I wanted to get some go-go at Vinyl Conflict? We do. It comes and goes off the top of my head. I'm not really sure what I have at the moment, but I know we do have some. I do carry it. I'm a big go-go fan, so I've always got my eyes peeled for it. But off the top of my head, I don't think I have anything on the shelf at the moment. But getting Trouble Funk EU, Rare Essence, and all that kind of stuff. Oh, here's a Rare Essence. Wonderful some dc go go what can you say about go go and dc yeah. so go go is uh an offshoot kind of somewhere between hip-hop and funk uh it's a very specific style of music there's like a standard drum beat that kind of goes with it and they were jam sessions they would they'd have a group of people get together and play music for hours and hours and hours. And as the style of music kind of got more popular, songs started getting written. Like a, a common thing would be like just kind of jamming and playing pop music. But some of the artists started getting really popular, Chuck Brown and Trouble Funk, and they started writing their own music and they got really, it got really popular, but it didn't really expand much past DC. Some of the people toured like Trouble Funk's played Japan. Um, but it's like almost just like a pocket of music that just exists kind of just in DC. It's still very healthy. It's still very popular. It's still going. It's just a really cool, unique style of music. And we are speaking to Bobby from Vinyl Conflict Records in Richmond, Virginia. And key to the key says, Zup, Bobby. Any chance you helped a kid crowd surf at an HF stool back in 96 at RFK Stadium? 96? Maybe not. But yes, I definitely went to a lot of HF festivals. I definitely did lots of helping people crowd surf as well as lots of crowd surfing. 96. I'm trying to think what the first year I would have gone. It's right in that pocket. But I think we're off by a couple of years. We have another question from Mr. Viggs, and he says, how much for that Body Snatchers? Now, is the Body Snatchers the ska band, the Body Snatchers? You know, the English all-girl ska band. What is he referring to, and how much is it? That that record you're talking about is awesome, and I do own that. But no, I didn't put it back in the same spot. The Body Snatchers was the go-go record I pulled out to show you guys, and I have no clue where I put it. Uh, I believe it's $3. Yes, you can buy it. 
I have to find it again, though. <laughs> I will just flash right now your Discogs and your Instagram cool. so people can check out your Discogs. Just type in Body Snatchers and it will come up. They should. I don't think a lot of my hip hop singles, I don't think my singles, unfortunately, are on Discogs. A lot of my full lengths are. Um, but a lot of the things that were like three to five dollars, we haven't had a chance to quite put up yet. Because if you check our site out, we have, I think, close to four thousand, if not over four thousand items listed. Um, what the heck did People I do? People can that? also contact you through Insta, right? Instagram? Absolutely. They can contact us through Instagram. It's just uh, vinyl conflict, one word. There we go. It was five dollars. I'm so sorry. So yeah, depending on where you are, uh, shipping varies, but it is for sale. If you want this body snatchers record, drop us a line either at vinyl conflict on Instagram or info at vinylconflict.com. Just drop us an email. This can be yours. And it's only three bucks. It's only three it was- bucks. It was five, but yeah, you know what? This is the Nardwar special. It's three bucks. I messed up. I said three the first time. Well, you well you can try. You probably need no, the no, ex- flash sale. We're good. <laughs> but it made me think, like ska. Do you have a ska section? Do you have a section for ska? Could we see that? I do. I have my I have my ska and reggae put together right now. Let's come over here. So let's pop that over here. And again, we're speaking to Bobby from Vinyl Conflict Records in Richmond, Virginia. So I think this section hasn't quite gotten uploaded to this cog. So if you do see anything again, drop us a DM on Vinyl Conflict uh, on Instagram or info at vinylconflict.com. We're happy to send pictures and, and ship and whatever. So here's our reggae and ska collection. Do you want to comment on any of these bands? Yeah, as I come to something, I'm thinking, I mean, obviously Madness is very popular. Ziggy Marley, Eddie Grant, uh, the Maytals, really incredible group right here. It's a cool compilation. Some American Ska, Beam Scala Beam. This all came from a collection and I'm not, horribly familiar with tons of obviously bad manners is very big uh i'm not super familiar with tons of these groups right now that i have in stock but i love you know laurel akins desmond decker ken booth i love all the original like reggae and ska type stuff john holt you had the untouchables in there too from la amazing wild child yes 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 yeah, some of these covers are just really great. <laughs> and are all these listed on Discogs? It doesn't look like these ones are. We try to upload as much as we can every day. And I don't believe the Scott collection actually got uploaded. I'm happy to mail any and all of it. So please feel free to drop us an email at info at And uh, we would love to make them yours. Spiritual stuff. Yeah, it's Calypso, Scandal Sky. And G Nova Four asks, "Can I visit for the Go Go Records?" A question. Can I visit for the Go Go Records? Yeah, you can like come by the shop. Absolutely, we're open seven days a week. We recently changed. We were doing appointment only up until last week, and now we are going to have open hours. Uh, if you want to book a private appointment, um, we're still doing those from 11 to 1. And then from 1 to 7, we're doing capacity for in the shop, and you can still come. We're requiring masks, and we got hand sanitizer at the door. But, uh, yeah, I mean, the GoGo collections come and go. Sometimes I have a bunch, and sometimes I have a couple. There's probably more if we were digging more, but I don't want to distract the whole time. Well, actually, do you have any GoGo posters? They are amazing <laughs> posters. You know, they're amazing yes. posters. I collect globe posters. They're really awesome, and they're not in the store, unfortunately. I have a very, very large collection of those. Um, it's like this letterpress company from Baltimore called Globe Printing, and they're really beautiful posters, very colorful and large. Do you have that uh, rare minor threat one? You know, the last minor no. threat gig? No, but I'm going to throw that one out there. If anybody has that and they're on the fence about selling it, that's one of the most sought after things I'm looking for in the entire planet. Um, I want that so, so, so bad. 
I know what it's worth. Hit me up if like that's that's one of my most sought after items. <laughs> and again, oh, uh, but this is funny you mentioned that oh. though. I don't have that one, but I do. I I do have a go go poster, and I lied. Uh, this is government issue with Trouble Funk. Trouble Funk being the go go band, and so Amazing. that's pretty cool. And that is a original flyer from uh, Georgetown University. Where'd you get that? That was a. I think I got that from my friend Dave Brown, but if I'm incorrect, I'm so sorry. Otherwise, Dave Brown, shout out. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's where I got that. How about old DC stuff? Like old DC sure. stuff. Like, for instance, you're going to reissue the Slicky Boys. What can tell the people about ah. the Slicky Boys? And do you have any Slicky Boys or Tina Peel? Do you remember Tina oh Peel? Gosh. No, I almost brought both of those records with me and I got so overwhelmed earlier and I had kind of a crazy day. The Slicky Boys are kind of one of the first generation punk groups from D.C. Uh, you know, right when that first explosion was happening kind of all over the world, uh, D.C. had their own batch of bands and the Slicky Boys was Washington's. Uh, I'm sure there were many, but that's like my favorite one. I think they stick out the most. I always really like their records. I mean, the first earliest stuff is more rock and roll than punk. And then they kind of get punk throughout the catalog. And then they kind of just, they, they were never super aggressive, but I think the really important thing about the Slicky boys was they were really, uh, they were part of the DIY scene. They weren't, they weren't part of the like crazy, like rock and roll syndicate type scene. They were really supportive. Uh, one of the documentaries that had come out, um, I think it's the DC punk documentary, not the, not the after the salad days. I'm blanking now. It was really cool because they did a lot of the interviews with the slicky boys. And it was really interesting. Uh, one of my favorite parts in it, they were talking about how everybody knows that discord was the first label where they were like, Oh, we're going to cut the covers and glue them together. But you got actually a chance to see that those guys had a couple labels like limp records and uh, Dakoit records. And they were actually doing that years before Discord was. They were the kind of the template to like, it was, yes, Discord did that. That is true. But because these guys were like, hey, you can do your own. Dakoy and Limp Records were actually some of the first people years before that disassembled popular, you know, record sleeves and then glued them back together and cut them themselves. And it was kind of like they were releasing their own records at the end of the seventies and stuff. And it, it, it's really cool. They were showing these guys how to do that. Um, do you have any obviously slicky the import boys in the shop? Do you have any slicky boys for sale? I almost brought my entire slicky boys collection with me. And I panicked because I no. <laughs> uh, no problem. I almost brought my, I almost but, brought my entire Slicky Boys collection with me, and I, and I changed my mind at the last second. <laughs> but I would almost dare the chat to mention a record, a hardcore punk record, and you can find it in your store and sell it to the chat, can't you? You can sell it. I would so love to. At Nardwar Serviette and then Bobby from Vinyl Conflict yeah. can find the record. And if you have any questions in general for Bobby yeah. at Nardwar Serviette, Head count records. Who killed Spiky Jacket? What's going on <laughs> there? Who killed Spiky Jacket? Oh my gosh! I think Spiky Jacket killed Spiky Jacket. <laughs> uh, so that was a cool group. They were they were originally from Boston, but two of the guys were actually living in Richmond, and they were great regular customers. The shop Ellie uh, and Harrison, and uh, it was just like a fun street punk revival group. Um, I dare say they were tongue in cheek. They'll tell you how serious it was. And it was, it was a fun time. Uh, the group was just kind of like an homage to all the really cool UK 82 and street punk bands over the years. Um, and you put them out on your record label. You put them out. I, I put I, out the beer store, the beer storm trooper seven inch. Yes. Your record label that had sweatpants. Yes. You had sweatpants <laughs> for your record label. <laughs> <laughs> yes yes we did make sweatpants <laughs> we did make sweatpants <laughs> they sold they out do? they actually they did great oh i think we made like 15 or 20 pairs and i noticed <laughs> that there's a spiky test pressing on your discogs oh yeah <laughs> what can you say about te 
test pressings, and do you have many test pressings to show to people? I did pull out a test pressing, and I do have a bunch to show some people, and these are all, well, this first one's not for sale, and then everything else is for sale. Um, this is a test pressing to one of our most recent and new titles, uh, the, Loud Not, the Loud Night LP, My Numbing Pleasure. Um, we're doing a repress and there's a pressing being done, uh, at a European pressing plant. Cause we're going to try to actually handle our own European distribution on this title, which is, I don't know. I'm going to give it a shot. Why not? 2020 was weird. So this is the, the test pressing for the third press. Um, the test pressing is a, a, a process that comes after they've cut the plates and everything. They need to test that there's no errors in it. So you, you cut the record once, you send it around, um, and you have a chance to listen to the record and make sure it's exactly how you want. Because sometimes there can be an error on the disc. I've actually done it before where I sent the wrong mix in and you get the test pressing and the record doesn't sound correct. Like maybe you submitted the demo version by mistake or it was missing whatever. Because, you know, in the process of recording, there's so many things that could happen. I've also had things happen where like in the pressing process, there was like dust that got into the pressing plant or in the, in the plates, and then every single copy has a skip on it. So the test pressing is a very, very, very vital, important thing. Uh, it has to sound good. And if this sounds good, they're all going to sound good. Um, so, yeah, that's a cool one. Here's some fun test presses. I might have a couple on the wall. Yep, sure do. This is a uh, full of hell test press. Got this at 65 bucks. It's on 8389 Records. It's a pretty cool one. Um, man. Oh, okay. Let's dig into the archives. I got some stuff tucked away. Uh, Bobby, we actually have a question for you from Let's Rad. And they ask, Bobby, do you have any trash talk? Do you have any oh, was trash just, talk? Yeah, there was a trash talk seven inch right where I was. So I can go back to that. This is the Trash Talk Walking Disease EP. Um, this is the tour pressing of the seven inch. Oh, you're looking at me. There we go. This is like a silk screen cover, limited edition, number 18 out of 70 tour. Let's leave it on a, a nice purple vinyl. This one is on Discogs. So if people want uh, to get that, let's check out your Discogs page. They can check out the Discogs. If they want to drop me a line, you can talk about it too. Happy to do that. And again, yeah. we're speaking here to Bobby from Vinyl Conflict Records, also a record label and a record label in the past to put out Who Killed Spiky Jacket. And you were just going to mention <laughs> some collector scum type stuff. Some collector scum type stuff. Sure. Yeah. What is? Oh, I well, no, I, when I think of collector scum, immediately I think of Glenn Danzig at a comics convention, and somebody mm -hmm. gave him a bootleg to sign, and he lifted up, <laughs> up the entire table he was at, like ah, and freaked out when he saw the bootleg. Do you have some rare misfits? What is the rarest misfit that you have? Because when I think of collector scum, I think of misfits. Man, so I had a uh, I had a full Misfits run about two years ago, but I don't think we have any rare Misfits right now. But I did pull you a whole pile of test presses that are not available anywhere yet. So if you see these and you want these, drop me a line. Oh, wait, what am I talking about? Rare test presses. Yes. I just posted one on our page today. I can't even remember that. This is probably the rarest test press I have right now. This is... Uh, the American Nightmare Test Press. This is on Malfunction Records. This is their demo seven inch. Um, extremely rare. Uh, I believe the test press is actually on color vinyl. So yeah, I'm not positive how many of these there are, but this is an extremely, extremely, extremely rare piece. It is for sale. Again, this one's not online. So drop us the line. I did put it on Discogs for what? collector scum price, but we can talk. It's negotiable. What's weird about collector scum and test pressings, like usually test pressings don't have a sleeve. So was it put in a regular sleeve? Like how come the test pressing has a sleeve? That's kind of unusual, isn't it? 
It is. I think a lot of hardcore and punk labels do that specifically. In fact, the stack that I just pulled out for you, none of these have sleeves. So you want to look at some weird test pressings we got? Please go ahead. Again, we're speaking here to Bobby from Vinyl Conflict in Richmond, Virginia. Here we have I Hate God Dope Sick Test Press. Uh, Jezu Christmas on Robotic Empire. Uh, I believe this is Man is the Bastard, um, which release I'd have to double check, but I believe that's a Man is the Bastard test press. Another uh, Jezu Ascension test press. I guess this is a double disc because I have two of them. Uh, Isis Wavering Radiant test press. It's a double LP. Where do you get all these test pressings from the band? It's a secret. <laughs> uh, sometimes I get them from the band. Sometimes I'm getting them from the record labels. Often it's from the record labels. There'll be deals where I think sometimes uh, record labels have a, a surplus of these. You know, uh, you sell them to collectors and sometimes they put them up for sale. But I think sometimes a lot of record labels end up with excess and they don't know how or what to sell them for and test pricings are something that i've always just really been fascinated with so i actually often when i'm talking to a label i have a nice relationship with ask if they want to try to sell them through the store and we try to like make it worthwhile for the label so we try to pay them very fairly and then sell them for a reasonable price that someone might be interested in but they are pretty much the rarest versions of records uh sometimes easy mode tyler says highly sought after hardcore paraphernalia yeah we might got some of that if i if i take a peek around and tojo sprawl says sprawl squad represent much love to bobby ager the best year for music will forever be oh five i got do got a uh yo check this one out this is a rocky horror picture show test press uh, I'm here still. Don't worry. My goodness. Where did that come from? <laughs> I have a friend uh, who was helping uh, an employee that worked at a record distributor kind of unload a collection. And there was a bunch of test presses in that. So that's that's an original Rocky Horse Picture Show test press. That one. That one's a little hefty, but it's for sale. So hit me up. I'd love to sell it to you. It's not on our discogs yet. Info at vinylconflict.com or vinylconflict on Instagram. It can and could be yours. Carla asks, <laughs> Punk, the Mint Chicks and or Nina Hagen. Oh, there was a Nina Hagen record. Yeah. What was the first one? The Mint Chicks or Nina Hagen. I definitely flipped by a Nina Hagen right here. That's for sale. It's $10. So if Carla Mint. wants that record. This one is on Discogs. It has a barcode and that's kind of our system. If it's on Discogs, it has a barcode. Uh, or if you just want to drop us an email or direct message on Instagram, it it can and will be yours. And again... This is Bobby from Vinyl Conflict on Nardwar's Video Vault. And if you have any records or questions for Bobby, just at Nardwar in the chat. And Bobby could possibly find that record, you know, of a punk variety. It's a punk, well, I'm it's grabbing a punk store, isn't it? It's a, yeah. I was, am I wrong in saying it's punk and metal? It's punk and metal, right? I think, yeah. I mean, punk and metal, I think it's all the same you know, they've got different Sonic, but the, the ideals are pretty similar. All right, here's a here's my favorite hardcore memorabilia. It's valuable to some and worthless to others. Um, this concert you were talking about earlier where I got to go see some bands play when I was really young. I uh, This band, Bar Fight, they're from Richmond in D.C. Uh, I was 14 years old at the show. It was their, it was kind of a reunion show. And when they were playing, a bunch of them went to a high school uh in springfield the springfield spartans and they got a bunch of their fingers and they ripped them out so they said satan's or satan it was pretty fun but i caught one in the audience uh and got everybody in the band to sign it so like i said worthless to some and 
valuable to others. This is a fully autographed bar fight foam finger from 2001. <laughs> this is the last one. This is an original Agent Orange skateboard. Complete deck. It's a pretty cool one. On Vision, Vision skateboards. And have you skated on that at the Vans Park? No, 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 no. <laughs> this is a collector's item. I got it through the store. I bought someone's collection and they brought it in afterwards uh, as a gift for, for taking care of them, uh, for buying all their records and they were happy with the price. So as a thank you, they brought me this and I cherish it dearly. <laughs> Abriana asks, any Jello Biafra and a Guantanamo School of Medicine? I just bought some in a used collection, which I have not processed yet. I bought it like literally yesterday. I will have some coming. Uh, keep your eyes peeled for the discogs. It will go up, but I, it's not up at this moment. Or you know what? Go ahead and email me and we'll, we'll dig it out and find it. So yeah, info at vinylconflict.com. Let's see. Yeah, I brought a bag. I brought a bag for my man Nardwar. Well, the Canadian... <laughs> Canadian punk rock favorites. That's what I was curious about. Like, did you yes. ever see punk fucked up in a basement? I saw fucked up and uh, I saw fucked up play a warehouse show. Yeah. Mm, no, I saw an after that fucked up played Philly and I went to their show and government warning played a basement after. I don't think I ever got to see fucked up in a basement. That would have been great. Live on Twitch with Bobby from Vinyl Conflict Records. Bobby, we're in an actual record store now. And Bobby we are can live. find, Bobby can find any, any record of a metal <laughs> punk persuasion that you want and then mail it to you for a price. <laughs> uh, um, back to Bobby. So I pulled a couple of my favorites, but it was hard to narrow down. So I brought a couple and then I brought a collection of who I think is the most important Canadian band. <laughs> so, obviously, this one, really incredible. Original Vile Tones, Vile Records. Uh, where'd you get that? That one, I believe, I got at the WFMU Record Fair in New York City. That was a pretty hefty one to come by, but very cool. Screaming Fist, yes. So that's a really, really cool one, I prize very heavily uh, what, what do you think about leaving price tags on records and taking price tags off because sometimes i take price tags off and it's scary i try to take them off but if i have any sort of feeling that it's going to tear the cover i typically will stop or try to put it back this one that sticker is from when that came out i don't think that's coming off so I'm going to leave that one. But, uh, you know, if it was for more recently, I'd, I'd give an attempt. Usually peel them off with your fingernail. It is a scary. It's a gamble. It's a gamble. Steve, Narvar, what, do you know this? The polls. I saw the polls from Toronto, Ontario. <laughs> I actually, yes. if you check out my Drake interview, if you believe it or not, ch ch speaking of Drake, Nicholas F. Drake, I actually showed that record to... Drake, because CN Tower, they have the song CN Tower, and the Views photo was on the CN Tower. So there's a connection. Oh, wow. Where'd you get that? The polls. That's pretty cool. I got that at Rotate This in Toronto. It's a cool record shop up there. Amazing. Amazing discoveries. Yeah. Always. Yeah, every I love time, that record. Every time. I remember one time, I, I think I got like a Malcolm X record at Rotate yeah. This as well. They have like amazing under the crates, under the crates, under the oh, crates. Yeah. You know. oh, yeah. <laughs> that's a that's a fair shop to go and ask questions at because they, they, they're they pretty knowledge and they got stuff tucked all over the place. And it never really hurts to be like, hey, do you have this? Do you have any more punk singles? <laughs> a lot of times you put out a record and you don't keep a copy for yourself. Or do you keep a copy for yourself? I always keep a copy for myself. Uh, oh, my neighbor's here who I have a package for. Hold on. <laughs> We're going to put her on the stream. Hey, Holly. You just wanted to say hi to Nardwar, didn't you? Yeah. Say hi to Nardwar. Hi. <laughs> How's do, it going? Do, do, loop, do. Do, do, do. Yeah! 
What can you say about Bobby? Sorry, Bobby, you closed oh, the door. She, do you want her? Yeah, she yeah. ran away. How late Please. She, yeah, he's asking you questions. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was wondering, what can you say about Bobby for the people tuning in to this Twitch stream? What can people know about Bobby and this neighborhood? Like vinyl conf. Look at the neighborhood. The neighborhood. <laughs> Yeah, Bobby is a great community member. He gets my mail for me. He's my concierge <laughs> service. I got cool mail today, too. Check that out. Yeah, <laughs> I love that store. Yeah, yeah, it's really cool. Yeah, yeah, Bobby's a great guy. Love him. Love being his neighbor. I hope that we're neighbors forever. What do it's people true. in the neighborhood think of Vinyl Conflict? What do people think of Vinyl Conflict? It's they so think cool. It's cool. They slow down. They check out what's like in the windows. Yeah, people think it's it's lit. Has Bobby turned people punk? Like a punk store in the neighborhood is everybody punk. Like has he turned people punk? He didn't turn me punk. That's because she was already punk. punk. Yeah, she was already punk. <laughs> Can't you tell? <laughs> I well, mean, this is how I've always dressed. Well, thank you very much, and do 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 almost do 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 <laughs> do do yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Ale. <laughs> the neighborhood you live in is incredible. It's incredible, Bobby. Oh, I love it. <laughs> But back to the bag. Well, maybe shoot a polls one more time and then go through some other Canadian treasures. My last batch of Canadian treasures is a Canadian collection. So I brought my career suicide collection. Is the career suicide Cherry Beach UK Ireland tour. It's a nice armpit. Brought some sevens. This is probably my favorite Canadian band of all time. Were you working merch on their tour? How did you get all that? No, just collecting over the years. <laughs> I've, I've never been on tour. I have booked them a few times, but so that's the tour press as well. Here's a test press. And another test press. From Ugly Pop Records from Canada. This is their last LP, Machine Response. Oh, that wasn't supposed to be in there. Well, that's a different collection I brought. Cool. We also had a question again from Carla about X-ray specs. Do you have any early mm. X-ray specs? And that also leads to my second question. Like a lot of hardcore is a lot of males. Is there many hardcore bands that are females? Yes, X-ray specs. Hit me up. That one's not on Discogs. Info at vinylconflict.com. We got you. Yes, there's so much all over the world. It's awesome. I'm really glad to see so many bands are coming forth. So many people are being excited to release their albums. Um, let's take a look around the wall. This is one just I'm coming up with. This is a, a group. I'm backwards, aren't I? Melon Pleaky. They're from Japan. Uh, super sick, hardcore woman fronted uh and then i just got an order in from la vida es Amuse from london they just sent us the new rata negra lp that just came out really incredible catchy uh punk kind of old school style really melodic and beautiful that great that group's awesome oh the dolly mixture that's a reissue what else do we have i know we got more Buddy Head asked again and said, I didn't put out all the Icarus line, just the first one, he said. However, he wonders, do you have any gun yeah. club? Gun club. That's another one I just got in this collection I bought that I haven't priced and put out yet. So check up with us or drop us an email when we come across it. We can 
get it. I don't think I have any at this given second in the store priced, but I just bought a very, very, very massive collection. And I know there's at least five or six gun club records in it. So, so. if people want to get a hold of you, I'm flashing, you know, the Discogs page and the Vinyl Conflict Instagram. Is They can also contact you through those? Absolutely. But you said also Absolutely. use the email? The email is great, too, because sometimes, like, say, if I have a record I haven't found yet, if they want to drop me an email, I'll keep it in my inbox until I find it. And I can drop them a line in a day or two later. It might get lost in the mail, in the mix, but I, I, I try my darndest to help every single person out. Um, I'm flipping through seven inches right now to find some bands for you. I had something on my wall, too. Yeah. There's so many groups, man. <laughs> and what exactly, Bobby, is the email again? Is info at? Info at vinylconflictrecords.com. Here's one. This is a local group that we released called Gumming. And it's kind of like touch and go meets amphetamine reptile style music. Uh, it's punk, but, you know, noise rock. Um. Really incredible. Lots of, you know, awesome local supporters. Uh, there's like a cool, uh, I don't know if they're still doing it, but Richmond had a, a, an event called the Bad Girls Review, and they would play that every year. Uh, it was really sick. A lot of really awesome local bands. Um, I wish I could pull some more stuff. I, I did a tape for a group called Itsy Bitsy, and these were women that were from Richmond, but also like, Asheville, and I believe also, I want to say Greensboro, and I'm fr I'm worried I'm getting it wrong, but this is a really cool all, all women punk band that we released. It's a great one. Is that your cassette section? Yes, we have can, so many cassettes. Can you show that? Yes, this is all cassettes. So this first row, really kind of all new demos. And the rest of it's kind of like you. So, hey, there's your boys fucked up. So, yeah, it's kind of hard, but we'll, we'll pan it real slow. How about that? All of these are for sale. I believe most of the tapes are not on Discogs, but I'm happy to mail them to you. I got another rack on the floor, too. It's organized chaos in here. <laughs> and Ollie asks... How can we get records distributed at your spot? Absolutely. Same email address we was talking about earlier. Info at vinylconflict.com. Drop us a line. Tell us what you got. If you have a record label, send us your full catalog. If you've got like links to like Bandcamp or SoundCloud, we'd love to check it out. We'd like to hear it first, of course. Um, you know, whatever wholesale rates you got. If you're a band and you want to try to get your record in the store, same deal. Drop us a line. We'll check it out if it's something we think we can use. It's difficult because shipping, you know, sometimes lays a factor into the price. Um, but anything that we feel comfortable trying to take it in, uh, it's never personal. It's just like a, it's a tough game. But we love to try to uh, support as much independent music as possible. So please, you know, drop us a line. We'd love to hear from you. And six cowbells oh just a shout out to six cowbells but above noise optics asks how is your home collection arranged alphabetically by year at home yeah i have it arranged alphabetically and then split up by loose genres but it is alphabetically so i have a, a greater hardcore punk collection and then i have my hip-hop I uh, have kind of my electronic music, reggae, uh, surf rock. Um, I have a go-go collection, uh, soundtracks. So each section from there is all the classic rock, jazz, blues. Each section is also broken down into alphabetical from there. So uh, all the cassettes yes. you had there at the store, were there DVDs too? I have a topper of DVDs and VHS as well. Yes. Could you read out some of the titles just out of the curiosity? Again, we're yeah. what is wondering what the hell is going on? Uh, it's me, Nordware the Human Serviette, live. Yes, live with Bobby from Vinyl Conflict Records in Richmond, Virginia. And if there are any questions for me or for Bobby, tag at Nordware Serviette, and Bobby can also find the record you're looking for, punk metal etc and mail it to you for a price 
for a price. So yeah, these are all those were DVDs, and then the first batch were some of the VHSs. So yeah, if you see anything, holler at us. The VHSs seem to be the popular ones. We get a lot of DVDs, uh, and they sell. But the VHS, there's there's a really hardcore group of collectors for VHS, so they, those don't sit around very long. And you are Bobby from Vinyl Conflict Records. And when I think of record stores, if I was in your store right now, I'd ask you, do you have any toys? Is there a toy section? You know, models? You know, I've thought about selling toys before. I do have toys. I'm a collector, and I kind of have them on display. I've never really had a good section for selling them. And I'm on the fence about doing it. Actually, that's not true. I have Misfits toys for sale. We have these, like, pretty cool... uh, Crimson Ghost figures. These are all twenty dollars each. We have a couple different versions. They're from the uh, Super Seven Reaction series. And we got like some fun stuff kind of tucked around the shop. So like you know, I have like some little skeletons that move in the sun. This is my favorite. We got on our last trip. I got a little Mister Bean that uh gets sassy in the sunlight. Got some Lucky Cats going on. Got a cool Balzac figure. And Pikachu. 1010. Got an Attack on Titan. Brack. And I got some uh, some plus head figures. Got the RCA dog. I've got a Daruma. Where'd you get the dog? The RCA dog? <laughs> RCA dog, I think I found in Japan. If I remember correctly. Yeah. Got a Astro Boy. Got Rogue from the X-Men. Another Puss Head. And then I'm Bobby, so I got Bobby from Bobby's World. It's a cartoon from the 90s. Got a little series of those. Got a, a corn doll from the album Issues. I got them on, got that when they played on tour. That's a, a rare time. promo item, isn't it? That or is what's that for it sale? Uh, it's no, that's that that's like part of my collection. I got it uh, when I saw them open the Summer Sanitarium tour in two thousand. So they they remade these, but this is only from the Summer Sanitarium tour. So this is probably worth a couple bucks, but it's it's mine. <laughs> Need just some more. Got a Bob's Big Boy, Stimpy. Got some more Astro Boys. Cable from the X-Men, more Puss Head, Captain Sensible from the Damned. This is a tile from the Van Skate Park. It broke off and I kept it. It's kind of cool. Got a Quasimodo figure, King Diamond, Tifa from Final Fantasy VII, Slayer figure, Android from Dragon Ball Z, Stitch, and then I got a, a Devo. With the Boogie Boy mask, and I got a bunch of Boogie Boy, uh, the Boogie Boy, Bob 2. This is the band Devo toy, American Idol from McDonald's that they made without licensing. Um, and it the battery's dead, but the song that would play sounded like a Devo song, and they did it all without asking. And Devo sued McDonald's and won, so this is pretty cool. Like it had the Devo hat, it had the Devo, hat. I mean, it has. It has the Devo hat, and the song that played on it sounded damn like a Devo song, but it wasn't. And yeah, they uh, they <laughs> Devo won. <laughs> I and think the main reason they're like they were like it's not that we care; it's that it's McDonald's. So shout out to them. That was cool. And there's that too. So, and then one more cabinet of toys. I got some more bobbleheads. You got. Mr. Alfred Yankovic, Eddie from Iron Maiden, Milo, got some more Eddie, got some cool band beer bottles, Iron Maiden, Municipal Waste, there's a Wind Hand and another Municipal Waste, there's a Guar beer, this is the band Metallica Pusshead toy that I guess they did without Pusshead's authorization, uh, Gorilla Biscuits, a couple more Pusheads. And this is a pretty cool uh, toy machine line of toys that came out in the early 2000s, I believe. There's all three. 
It's a little Mark Gonzalez Crooked Bear Brick. And then another Mark Gonzalez toy. And then just a couple more fun guys. What an so that's the toy collection. What an this. incredible collection. But none of this is for sale because that's your own personal cash, isn't it? I know. I know. I've thought about replacing these with things that would be for sale because I love stuff like this. And I come across it. And there's certain things I have duplicates of. Um, it's just decoration. But uh, I don't know. Talk me into opening a toy store because I really want to. And again, this is Bobby from Vinyl Conflict Live. You're live, right? You're really live. No, I'm live, yes. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> boom. Live from Vinyl Conflict in Richmond, Virginia. And this is Nardwar's Video Vault on Twitch. And if any questions for Bobby, just throw them in the chat and I will ask. Or if any questions in general for me, or if you have any challenges for Bobby to find a metal or punk record. And as I was saying, a lot is listed. Uh, as you were saying, a lot. I'm going to flash again the Discogs page as a lot from Vinyl yeah. Conflict, doesn't it? It's close to 4,000 items, yeah. Trial. Yes. Here we go. This is a trial record. It is the early years. Is a double LP is a import from a Polish label called Refuse Records. That's a really cool one. Um, Trial from Seattle. Yes. And we have another question from Abriana. Ask about any bad brains. Do you have any bad brains? The bad brain stuff just got reissued. We're waiting on a package. We will very soon. I do know I have probably the Roar Sessions coming. And then I think I have uh, Rock for Light copies coming as well. Uh, again, check in with us. Follow our Instagram. We post everything as it shows up. At the, As the second I want to say I don't, but I will. What about badges, buttons, or pins? Like, do you have a Neo's patch? Where is your badges, buttons, or pins? Buttons or pins? <laughs> Yes, we have so, so, so many. Lots to look at in this one. These are all cool. These are two bucks a piece. If you see anything as I'm flipping through, feel free to drop us an email. These are not listed online, unfortunately. They're kind of a grab-and-go type item, but we try to keep it, you know, diverse and different. There we go. And then my... Patches and pin sec or patches are over this way. Got some cool back patches. And then we got some regular, these are uh, embroidered patches. A bunch of really cool groups. These are all for sale. They're $10 for the embroidered patches. Make yourself a battle vest. Are these listed on Discogs? These are not. Patches are not on Discogs. Uh, Discogs, unfortunately, is just a, an uh, audio database. But these are all for sale. You could definitely drop us a line, either email. We're in the process. I'm glad you're asking about this. and I, I'm, I wish I had spoke about it sooner. We're in the process of making a Shopify store. So all of this will be on our website. It'll be a one-stop shop for records and patches and t-shirts and posters and everything. It's just not quite finished yet. They were so, so, so close, but fortunately not just yet. We will have all of this available online. So these are regular silk screen patches. These are $2 a piece. Who makes these? It's a number of people. I think a lot of it's fan made. It's just like kind of people making patches of bands they like i grab them typically off of like a touring punk band will have them in a distro kind of set up at their table if i see patches that i'm super stoked on i'll, I'll ask about grabbing them for the store and occasionally there'll be different catalogs you can buy them from these are stickers these are also two dollars amazing you have so many <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah. You know, we've got to keep it punk with the Tori Amos and the Tori Teenage Riot, too.
I just have fun trying to track these things down to bring into the store because I, I just really I'm a huge fanatic about stickers and patches and all that kind of stuff. It's a little war zone into down to nothing into corn into cholera. <laughs> This is Bobby awesome. from Vinyl Conflict Records going through all the patches available at Vinyl Conflict. I know it's a good store if it has zines, if the store has a magazine rack. Uh, there is a magazine rack in yes. Vinyl Conflict. And do you have it one? Is it sure does. Yeah, we got tons of books and zines. It's a little... Here's the newest zine we got. I have to DM this person back, but it's pretty cool. It's got an interview with Ian McKay, Tim McMahon, and Gabe Rodriguez. So this is like a new zine that just came out recently. These are for sale. Unfortunately, zines are not on Discogs. Uh, when we have our new web store, all that kind of stuff will be uploaded. Um, and then I have a, all sorts of zines. All sorts of zines. Tons and tons and tons. So... Here's the punked around zine. I think that just finished the series. That was a pretty cool zine. Lots of different topics. See nothing. I believe this is a photo zine. Yep. That's the local. It's a local photo zine. It's very cool. Bubbles is a local uh, comic book zine. It's really rad. Gets in touch with a lot of original artists. Razor Blade and Aspirin. That's also a local zine. Really great phot photography and interviews, and a lot of them come with records as part of the, the package deal. So Razor Blades and Aspirin's really cool. It's one of my favorite locals. This is the old issue of Defiant Pose. Chips and Beer. Got a few of those. Some more bubble zines. It's a little bit of a mess right now. Um, oh, I have this cool Fugazi zine. I only have a couple issues left, but it's a really cool, like, kind of fold out newspaper style that comes out into like these big posters that kind of. This is like the money that uh, Fugazi raised with their shows for different things. And it's like the, the family tree lineage of Fugazi, each member going into the bands they went into. Going into the bands they went into, going into the bands they went into, going into the bands they went to. So it's like, ah, Fugazi did all this, made all this happen. They're responsible for it. This seems really cool. Um, and each one folds out into like a large poster, two sided. So this one's neat. Yeah, this one's fun. Bobby, yeah. Could you show a bit of the, more of the rack? Could you show the rack, like what's on yep. the rack? The mag, you know, some of the different Definitely. stuff on the I rack? Yes, yeah, so I pulled you out most of the zines to look at those so the rest of it's pretty much books and you got books on all sorts of music topics of the underground and rock and roll type stuff we got some hip-hop books too and, and these are all final conflict sure. records bobby is that a crass book it is the Crass book, yeah. Story of Crass. Really good read. I read it a couple of years ago and I absolutely really enjoyed it. Any pictures? <laughs> yeah, there are some pictures. Doing this one handed to my best ability. Yeah. And this is the, the new uh, Nancy Burrell book, uh, I'm Not Holding Your Coat. Memoirs from uh, Punk Rock Rebellion. It's really cool. Um, it's like coming up in the Philadelphia punk rock scene as a woman and kind of the unique experience being a show promoter and, you know, growing up in like a really violent punk scene. Uh, I, I saw a review of that in Razor Cake fanzine. Do you get any Razor Cake in there? We sure do. We got Razor Cake over here too. We have it at the front door because uh, it's a. Uh, we give them away. 
So we have free copies of Razor Cake every month as well. So yeah, very awesome. Shout out Razor Cake. And back to the books. We got some more. Got the Japanese Flux discography. Really awesome series. It's my last couple copies. The and Anvil. 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 Canadian yes. content. Yeah. Yes. They're so sick. <laughs> I got to see them a few years back. And these kind of are the coffee table size books. That's a book about all just about battle vest patches and stuff. Cool. And That's Easy Mode section. Tyler asks again, we're speaking here to Bobby from Vinyl Conflict Records in Richmond, Virginia. Are you still okay for time, Bobby? Yeah, I think so. Sure. Easy as long as mode, people are still interested. Easy Mode Tyler asks, does he have any private function or ammo? Not sure if it was distroed here. Private function or ammo? Ah, oh, okay. Private function I'm not super familiar with. Ammo I actually released on Headcount Records. Um, I did the demo tape of that, and that's sold out, unfortunately. Actually, if you'll be patient, once you look at the store, if you want to talk to the folks for a second, I'm going to pull you out something really cool. Again... We are talking to Bobby from Vinyl Conflict Records, live from Richmond, Virginia. Again, this is me, Nardwar, the human serviette, live on Twitch. All right. So there was a rock club in the late 70s and the early 80s. In the early 80s, it started doing punk shows, but... I bought a collection off a guy a couple of years ago, and unfortunately, he didn't have any of the punk material. There we go. He didn't have any of the punk material, but he had all the late 70s uh, kind of funk, rock and roll, blues bands. And I got a large chunk of his flyers off of him, and I still have those. So when you started talking about that, it actually reminded me that I have this box full of really cool flyers of, I believe this is a, a rockabilly flyer. The club is called Hard Times. So these are all just like original flyers. It's kind of fun to look at. Some of the groups are local. Some of them are touring acts. The Casuals featuring Johnny Sportcoat. Skip Castro Band. So these are like really early flyers. It's kind of sweet. They're not quite posters. They're like regular flyer style, but they are that old because it came from uh, one of the promoters, one of the uh, talent buyers. Where were they playing? it is this uh it's right near it's right on campus um it's right on carrie street and now it's a it's a thai restaurant but at the time it was a what they called a beer bar so and apparently from what i understand the upstairs was a fancy italian restaurant and the downstairs was a bar and they were throwing these concerts and you know the myth goes there's a oh not myth minor threat played there later on this is this is still the late 70s but once you get to like 82 and stuff bands like minor threat played there i don't have any of those flyers unfortunately so these are cool kind of blues and hard rock and all sorts of stuff some promo photos what's he what's he doing there what's going on in a photo this one looks like he's thinking about singing <laughs> it's like one of those big silver microphones with the uh the cone on it he's got completely cupped and what about your punk photos or punk posters you have those yeah. filed away don't you i do i do but i have my favorite ones they're on display in the store we can go back to these later um i collect these everywhere i can get my hands on them uh if you're sitting on some of this kind of stuff and thinking about selling it feel free to contact us we're, we're pretty serious buyers for that kind of stuff this is a this is actually a replication, not of a flyer, but this is a blown up ticket stub from when the Ramones played Richmond. It's kind of cool. And then here's a couple from all over the country, but here's a really interesting lineup. Discharge, Butthole Surfers, Suicidal Tendencies, MDC, and Dr. No. And then another Discharge flyer 
I'm trying to get the glare out of it. Discharge, social distortion, MDC, the dick's coat of honor, decry. Bold judge beyond. Septic death, Stalag 13, neighborhood watch. I showed you that trouble funk government issue earlier. This is a Japanese flyer for the band Laughing Nose. It's a Guar flyer from the Metro. And this is a Richmond flyer for a damned gig. It's pretty cool. Damned the Prevaricators and Unseen Force, two local bands at Rockets. A couple of New York flyers. This is in DC though, token entry and then breakdown cross face. Another cool septic death flyer. And all these are your personal collection. Do you have any for sale? Like are like you sell patches? A little bit, yeah. I do have a section of posters for sale. Uh, not so much the 80s ones, but um, got some cool posters. That's a flyer. And people so can the buy these. These are for sale, yeah. So here's a couple of Veil flyers for sale. Pennywise. Mostly kind of promo posters, but it's a cool tragedy flyer. Less than Jake Dillinger 4. And if you see any of these that you like, not the ones on the wall, but if you see any of these posters you like, they are for sale. If you want to drop us a line, info at vinylconflict.com or vinylconflict on Instagram. Warzone. King Diamond poster. Alabama Thunder Pussy. Hot Water Music. Jawbox. Coxbar. The Accused. This is the No Warning Weekend. Ah, Canadians. It's the No Warning Weekend. They did a reunion. I got to go on tour with No Warning a couple of years ago. It was a good time. Went out. It was the uh, it was a Midwest tour. Uh, it was No Warning with uh, Lil Ugly Mane, the rapper. So I think that's all the posters. And, and then I have a couple more. Oh, go ahead. We have a question, actually, from DJ Loki. Again, this is for Bobby from Vinyl Conflict Records. And DJ Loki asks, what's a good way to learn about go-go music if you're outside of the DMV? Absolutely. There's a, there's a pretty cool... There's a documentary... There's a book. There's uh, my favorite introduction I've seen to it is a film called the history of, or the legend of cool disco Dan. It's a graffiti documentary, but it ties really hand in hand with it. And it touches on it in a really honest way. I think that's a cool place to start the, the legend of cool disco Dan that's streaming on some platforms. I can't quite remember. Um, there's a book that Roger Gassman released called pump me up. It has a lot of those flyers we were talking about it. Um, I think that's kind of a collector's item at this point, but it's around and that's really, really sick. I was going to say good to go, but that's a live documentary. There's a couple really great live videos on YouTube. If you want to check out Trouble Funk live in Japan. I mean, they were big in DC and it's fun, but they play this huge production on this wild stage to a really huge audience. And it's really sounds great. That's on YouTube. Um, Look up some of the groups such as uh, Trouble Funk, Rare Essence, um, EU. They did the song DeButt. Um, that's a great starting place. And then there's just tons and tons of smaller groups and one hit wonders. Um, there's a couple other go go books. If you take the time to look them up off the top of my head, I, if I was home, I could pull the books out. But uh, yeah. Are there, there's there's any comps, a, a of, are there any comps you have in stock? I don't have any comps in stock, unfortunately. Uh, there are some there are some cool comps out there. Uh, I think the Good to Go is what I was talking about. That's a really good compilation. If you look up Good to Go, that's a cool one. And then I think there's like a bunch of Trouble Funk compilations, which are great starting points. They're kind of like the Godfathers. Chuck Brown is the Godfather. Uh, Chuck Brown is the Soul Searchers. Anything by them is really incredible. Bobby from 
final conflict, what was Springfield Mall like? Gosh, if I could just have that back. Springfield Mall was really cool. It was, you know, you could skateboard there from where we lived. It would take a minute, but, you know, it was a short drive. Parents would drop you off. It was that golden age of the mall, man. Like it, my mall had, I think, four record stores in it, but none of them still vinyl. They're all music shops. There's like a Sam Goody, Kent Mill, um, Waxy Maxi, and I can't quite remember what the fourth one was. So it was just kind of cool. Like when you're getting dropped off at the mall, you had four places. Let's just say three, three or four places you can go look for new music every week. Uh, my shop, my mall did have a hot topic. It did have a couple skate shops in it. Um, and it's just kind of a place for Northern Virginia. You never really meet people from all the different areas. I mean, maybe it's different now with social media. I'm sure it is. Uh, but at that point, you weren't really meeting people from other areas. So to be like a young punk rocker dropped off at the mall, that was kind of how you met people, good or bad. Like, you know, you looked for other people that kind of looked like you and took the dive into trying to meet, you know, people your age. Uh, and I definitely met a lot of really great friends that way. Uh, you know, you find out about other local bands, you bring flyers with you. You weren't even like flyering for a show. Your friend's band was playing. So you had a stack of flyers just with you because that's just what you did at the time. You took flyers for shows you liked with you. You know, when you found that stack of flyers at like a record store, you took four or five to give to people, not just for like, oh, I need to remember the show. You would take like a little stack and then like go hunt, kind of hand them out and stuff. Uh, that was all like kind of common back then. Um, Springfield Mall was just like a really cool place. I had a metro stop near it. So people would come from other areas. Uh, I are, miss it. <laughs> what are all places to eat? Like Boulevard Burger, Hot for Pizza, Charm School, Hang Space, yeah. the 821 Cafe, places to eat. Man, you you know you're rich, man. Uh, definitely. The Cobra Cabana and the Hot for Pizza folks, they, uh, they own both restaurants. Big shout out to Herbie and Josh. Um, those are really awesome, fun restaurants. They have great patios and they've got a great menu. Uh, 821 Cafe, that's the one that's just walking distance from the store. It's not in our neighborhood, but it kind of is. It's on the outskirt from our store. You could walk there in five minutes. That place is a Richmond staple. They've been going for you know a long time now. Absolutely love 821 Cafe. Um, they're definitely, they're open and doing pickup and everything. Um, the Guar Bar, of course. Don't forget the Guar Bar. In our neighborhood, we have two restaurants. There's Mama Zoo's, which has not reopened, but that's an Italian restaurant. And then another one, La Possum, which is on the fancier end. But really incredible to have just this short walk down the street um gosh there's so many places my favorite place is a place called cuba cuba that's really solid cuban food um sticky rice there's just it goes on there's so many places can you lift up the phone just a bit? Your eyes are slightly up there. That's amazing. I'm sorry. No problem. I was, I'm holding strong, but I am getting tired. Thank you for holding on the phone for so long. I really appreciate it. Yeah. Who, who the hell am I? Well, I'm Nardwar, the human serviette, talking live, talking live to Bobby from Vinyl Conflict Records. Thank you for your time, Bobby. I really appreciate that. I mean, I'm just sitting back having fun looking at all your records and – People of Twitch, if you want Bobby to find a record, punk or metal, he can probably find it in his store right now. And I have a challenge for you, Bobby. I've been trying. I've been trying. I've been trying. Well, actually, I should be a challenge. I was going to say, first off, if you want to walk to, say, the 821 Cafe, it might be cold out, so you need a T-shirt. Do you have a T-shirt section? Do you have some clothing yeah. I could buy? <laughs> I thought you were going to ask me to walk to 821 to see if it was actually that close. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I do have a t-shirt section. Um, and we do have Vinyl Conflict t-shirts. Here's like a cool sweatshirt we're doing right now. Kind of a crass logo, Mr. Yuck. This has kind of been our new logo ever since COVID, just to kind of uh, stay safe and clean. Let me sell band t-shirts, new and used. Each size is a little different. And these are all for sale too. They're not on our web store currently. Again, I apologize for the inconvenience, but info at vinylconflict.com. We'd love to make these yours.
This is Bombi from Vinyl Conflict Records going through the t-shirt rack at Vinyl Conflict. Slum Village. Yeah. <laughs> Slayer. And your dad is into Slayer, right? My dad is into Slayer. I've gone and seen it with him a couple times. <laughs> He's a big fan. Yeah, my dad took me to a lot of concerts. It was always a lot of fun because he was just kind of into it. So I'd go watch a band and come back and he'd disappear and he's hanging out with one of the other bands or one of the band's parents had come to the show and he's hanging out with them. And <laughs> it led to a lot of really neat things over the years. And Nina, who is modding today, said, Welcome to Nardwar's virtual shopping experience. With special guest, Bobby, from Vinyl Conflict Records. Yeah, so we have all sorts of stuff. It's... My arm's getting tired. That's okay. <laughs> How much for that public enemy shirt? The public enemy shirt, uh, that's fifteen dollars. And is that an old shirt that you found or a reissue? I think it's a reissue based off the the print on the the neck. I believe it's a reissue. The Omegas playlists. Left cross, human gas. Fred Perry's in there, Foundation, The Flex, Failure Face. It's one of our one of our shirts. And Bobby, I was wondering, Curious George from Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada. Is that in the shop somewhere? <laughs> Curious George from Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada. I notice it's on your Discogs page. Is it? Yes. Which release? Could you tell me if it's a 7-inch or an LP? It was on Nemesis, and it's a 12-inch. Nemesis was the Offsprings label before Nitro. Yes. yes. So it came out about 89. I had the Nemesis book. I was about to pull that out, but I don't. There's a Curious book? George. Wow. There's a, Nemesis, there's a Nemesis Records book. Yes. He said it's an LP, Curious George. You can flip your phone if you want. I, I'd love for you to show the people the sure. amazing racks. and your... My flipping techniques? <laughs> yes. What's the name of the Curious George album? It might be in the back. Children of a Common Mother. And it's an LP. Yes. All right. But I'm making you do all this work, and I don't really want well, it, but I was curious <laughs> if you could find it. Yes, I found it. Oh, amazing. There it is. Wow. From Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada. And I think the serial number on Nemesis, like the offspring, was like one or two before or after. Is pretty much the exact same time oh wow you're telling me i need to check this record out then <laughs> the offspring is one of my favorites <laughs> pitbull attack by curious george and people can find that record on your discogs page they right? sure can yes so 100 yes that wasn't in the racks do you have a special place only so much in the racks we only have so much space so that's the thing right i i start with the new arrivals basically here's the process uh, we put our new arrivals out. This is pretty much like the most popular shelf in the store. If you're coming in the shop, this is the shelf you want to hit. Uh, I was going to get to that earlier. And this is just like whatever's the newest price records, uh, you know, as people are selling us collections or whatever, this is, it's going here first. We give it a fair crack at the locals. Um, you know, if you want to have a chance to look at our records before they go onto the internet, the global marketplace. This is the rack you want to look at. So every local has a chance to come through and look at this. We don't put this on the internet yet. Um, so Miles Davis test press. How about that? Huh? <laughs> um, 
This is this rack is ever changing. After a certain amount of time, we pull them out of the back of the rack. We list them to the internet. After they're listed to the internet, depending on how long it's been in the store, it either goes here next for a little amount of time, or typically it's going to go from there to here. It sits on this shelf for a few months. And then as this shelf gets too full, we pull the oldest records and the oldest records go to this back rack. And we just have, it's because we only have so much limited space. I mean, I have boxes all over the floor. And the thing is I have hundreds of more records that I'm trying to put on the shelf. Uh, as you see, my shop isn't the biggest. So like every shelf is like damn near full when you look at it. So yeah, I mean, I have a lot of boxes on the floor and stuff and I'm trying to, uh, avoid doing that at all costs but you know sometimes we have a chance to set the table up out front i'm able to take these boxes off the floor have a sidewalk sale or something do you um, have any eight tracks or wall hangers a weird section celebrity sports records incredible str incredibly strange mm. I had a NASCAR record pretty recently. It was like an official NASCAR record. That was in the new arrivals, though. Wait, you want to flip. That's right. Don't know where it is, though. But yeah, there's some fun stuff mixed in the new arrivals. And Timmy Bod asked, was that the Do Bob song by Miles Davis? Mm. Yep. This is not yet listed online, but if you are interested, $45 plus shipping at a cost. Uh, hit us up, info at vinylconflictrecords.com. I'll put it in the front so it'll be easy to find. Info at vinylconflictrecords.com or anything else you're seeing. I mean, it's got lots of fun stuff in here. Um, what was the other question? Sports records, that's what I'm looking for. Celebrity, that would be kind of mixed in. I don't really have a section for that sort of stuff. You don't have that's the incredibly story. strange section, you know, the weird section. Um, no, I don't. <laughs> I should, shouldn't I? That'd be cool. Hmm. Can't find this NASCAR record, but a good excuse to flip through all this other stuff. Oh, hey, look, it's Toronto. Ma Martha and the Muffins. And actually, I saw you had a DOA and a Hanson Brothers as well. More Canadian content. Amazing. And it includes the bonus seven inch that has a bonus seven inch in it. And the DOA, I, I remember seeing that too, but I don't remember where. But it is there. And feel free to email us. We'll we'll track it down. And again, Bobby, could you address the camera and tell the people who you are exactly? I am an Ardwar. I'm a human serviette. Oh wait, that's you. Um, I'm Bobby Egger. I'm 35 years old. I live in Richmond, Virginia, and I'm the owner of Vinyl Conflict Records. And this is not a Vancouver store, is it? This is not a Vancouver store. You're not. I'm not in the other room, am I? This really is across the nation. Yep, we're we're live using the inter interwebs. This is live. I've never been to Vancouver. I'd really like to come. Is that where you are? Yes, in Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada. That's awesome. Well, I'll have to come visit. Please do. I don't think we can come yet, can we, though? Here we go. Here's some more DOA. What is the closest you have gotten to Kanye West? What is the closest you've gotten? Have you touched a record that he's sampled? What is the closest you've gotten to Kanye West? I was just curious. Oh my gosh. Uh, a record that he sampled. Or do you know somebody that knows somebody that met Kanye West? I gotta wonder. I don't. The, the closest thing I can think, I guess that may be, is my buddy Travis, little ugly man. He, he got tweeted at by Kanye West once. That's probably the closest I could think. 
What was the tweet? That's amazing. I think the tweet. <laughs> I think the tweet was Kanye West was really surprised that Lil Ugly Man was not black. That's the tweet. Bah, boom. <laughs> and did you actually? And he, he like tweeted at her. <laughs> if I got that quote wrong, someone correct me. But that was a. Uh, somebody tweeted at him. That's the closest. It's, you know, I guess that's two steps removed. <laughs> I don't think I have a better story than that. Or I don't think I have a second story for that matter. <laughs> what about Pure Hell? The band Pure Hell. Yeah, Pure Hell's awesome. I might have that. No. Wait, wait. Maybe that's in this order. Pure Hell's awesome. Uh, I believe they're from... Oh, where are they? Are they Pennsylvania? I think Philadelphia. Philadelphia, that's what I thought. Yeah, we've been carrying that one. But I think we... Oh, here we go. Yeah. Really awesome, awesome black punk rock from 1978. My memory serves correct. Very, very, very sick. Boots are made for walking cover. Yeah, I'm not. I'm, I'm feeling a little foggy on details, but I want to say 78. Someone else will probably correct me. They also yeah, released an that. album, too. There is, and I had the album, and it looks like we're sold out of that. That's when I remembered that we had the 45 for sale as well. Thank you again, Bobby, for taking the time to talk to me, Nardwar, the human serviette, on Twitch, I'm having a great time. Yes, as Nina said, doing my virtual shopping experience. I'm sitting down here, but you have basically held a phone for like two hours talking to me. Sure. You have great. You're really in good shape to do that. Oh, thank you. I am a little tired, but I'm. I think I'm enjoying it so much that it's not really exhausting me in the sense like. This is what I'm passionate about. This is what I enjoy. You know, I do it for eight hours every single day. Oh, wait. Who was asking about that earlier? So somebody in the chat was asking about the addicts. Yeah, I'm gonna set that in the front. I remember that. I'm so sorry. Here it is. We do have it. I lied to you. I'll never lie to you again. I'm so sorry. Are gigs back now? Are gigs back? No, not yet. DJ nights at outdoor patios have kind of started, but um, no gigs. And how have other stores dealt with COVID? You've put a lot on Discogs. How have other stores dealt with COVID? And are those stores gone now? It's tough. No, I mean, it's it's been a very thing. Every shop I know has handled it in a very different fashion. Um, I know some stores that did not go online. And now, <clears throat> now they're, they're, they're doing fairly okay at this point. Um, it took a kind of a bit of a curve. Uh, between March and August, we really, really, really had to put a lot of effort into it to kind of make ends meet. But at the same time, I think if you made the decision to be closed between March and August, you were able to minimize your overhead. So you maybe weren't paying employees or you had a lower electricity bill. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm gonna drink some water. Um, you might have like a lower electricity bill. You weren't paying for staff or whatever. So I think some of those stores uh, were able to survive in, in different ways because of that. And now that things are reopening, people are, uh, oh, I pulled something else out for you. I forgot about. Again, this is Bobby from Vinyl Conflict Records. And actually, if anybody winding up has any questions or wants Bobby to find a record, this at me in the chat. But Noise Optics says, this has been really therapeutic. I have wanted to get back into a record store for so long. Right on. Thank you. Okay, Narwar, this one's for you. Because earlier you played a 7-inch and you said it was dirty. Correct? I used my record cleaner, which maybe didn't work too good on 45s. Was, what, was, uh, what was it? Is that the Okinoki? It's the Vaco Rec. Mm. I saw I had seen that before. I wanted to show you what we use. 
This is a product called the VPI. Are you familiar? It looks like a turntable. Punk is the cap. Does it um, burn acetates? No, 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 no. This is my cleaner. So, like, you have your record, and you put some, you lubricate it, you pop it on. I set this up because it's usually covered in stuff. And I was like, oh, when I saw that disc happen to you, I wanted to show you this. So, you turn it on like a turntable. Use a brush. And you saw the liquid I put on there earlier. We're going to spread that out evenly between the grooves. Right? And then you scrub. So the brush is actually not damaging the record. This I know the first time I did it, it terrified me too. But no, this actually doesn't damage your record. You get it evenly into all the grooves. The brush is soft. And you bring the hose over. And then you pop that sucker on. It's an actual vacuum. Oh my god. That kicks ass on anything I have. I'm sorry, that was probably really loud for everybody. <laughs> no, I love the sound effects. All right. So, so what is Dan, that, that called? And how much does that it cost? Is v- that is a VPI. There's there's definitely scratches, but it gets all the dust out. This is like, you know, there's some surface wear to this record, but this is as clean as you're going to get it. Um, this is, I picked a really gnarly record to play, but, or clean, but, uh, it's a, it's a VPI. Um, they're a little pricey. I got mine secondhand from another record store that had closed. Oh no, no, they had, they had upgraded theirs. Excuse me. I got it from dig records in Leesburg, Virginia. He upgraded his and he gave me his old one. They did not close. They're awesome. And they're very much open and they have a cool record label too. shout out to Kevin and Tim. Um, and again, yeah. we're speaking here to Bobby from Vinyl Conflict Records. And DJ Loki asks, what size is a Slum Village t-shirt? Slum Village t-shirt, uh, that was that was a size large. It's a size large. And Bobby, you also mentioned you had a, a veil collection. Didn't you have an avail yeah, collection? I did bring the I almost forgot about that. Yeah. I might have to put you down for a second. Perhaps this is Bobby's store. Vinyl Conflict. In Richmond, Virginia. I forgot I brought that. I did. So I brought, you know, some of the albums. This is the first record, Satiate. A veil from all... San Francisco, right? From Richmond, Virginia. Oh, I amazing i got that wrong i got them ah! con- i got yes i got them confused with neurosis because <laughs> i think avail were on lookout weren't they they were yes and i got confused Correct. that's why i thought they're from san fran i'll let it slide <laughs> that's okay i'm always wrong i'm always wrong this is an avail satiate test for us so i brought I just had it popped in the back. Their book copies are here. A copy of Over the James. One of oh, Over the James, One Wrench. Um, front Porch Stories. One of these, not this one, is on the limited edition red vinyl original pressing on fat records so how much did avail do once they left lookout you know now that i'm thinking about it i think they were actually on fat rack i just agreed with you saying lookout no they were on lookout as well they toured quite heavily. I think at the end when they were, uh, I guess when they, by the time they joined fat rack, this is all when they started playing, that was kind of, around the time that I was getting into stuff. So I unfortunately didn't get to see them in their heyday. I saw them at the very end, but they're an incredibly heavily touring band. They, they played everywhere. They worked their butts off. They toured constantly. Richmond in the nineties was a really cheap place to live. And, you know, it was kind of a home base for them 
as an excuse to be on the road constantly. So they were an incredibly, incredibly hardworking band. See a Veil Dixie album, and I have the test press to go with that one too. A um, couple more Veil test presses. If someone approached a Veil, how would they know Bobby? How would they know me? If you approached a Veil, how would they know Bobby? <laughs> Yes. Was that really um, <laughs> I guess a couple of the guys I know through the store and through hardcore shows like Bo and Tim. Um, I think I really got to know Tim the best. Uh, but would they know you as the number one fan that has everything? I don't know. I've uh, I don't have everything just yet. I'm still trying. Tim's got a couple things I still need. So, <laughs> um, no, I'm definitely a massive fan of theirs. I mean, something that was super Thank cool. you again, Bobby, for this tour. Now you're like on your knees falling over. You're so, how long no, have no, you been no, going? No, no. How hard have you been going? Like how long today have you been going on the store? You know, how long? Oh, I came in to work this morning at 11. We open at noon on Mondays. I came in at 11 o'clock this morning to buy a collection an hour early. Um, so I've been going since about 11 o'clock this morning. And then I, I rushed home. We closed at 6. I went home. I had dinner. Well, I had a small dinner, actually. My, my wife is probably waiting for me. Uh, <laughs> and we started at 7. Whoops. A Am sign. I muted? No, no, you're still there. That uh, maybe a maybe that's a sign that we should. Have we been going for two? And, have we been going for two and a half hours? I think so. <laughs> no, more. I think I have to go home. <laughs> Live on Twitch. And Bob asks a question. Bobby, what is your yeah. connection to Jeremy Borm from Touche Amore? Oh, Jeremy is such a sweet dude, man. I literally know him through the shop and only through the shop. Uh, I got to interview him on my live stream once. Uh, he's a record fanatic. He's such a sweet person and it's just an encyclopedia of punk and everything. Um, very approachable. And I just got to know him through the store. You know, there's a lot of bands that pass through on tour. You know, Touche Moore definitely plays Richmond a lot. But I have one specific story about Jeremy that is just so incredible. Uh, I used to live above the store, as I was saying. And there was a time where there was a snowstorm. And I don't know. I came to work anyways. I was just pricing records or doing mail order or, or something. And I was just hanging out in the store. Didn't expect anything to happen. It was like dumping snow outside and this van pulls up in front of the store and uh touche more gets out they had an off date and they were just passing through everything was like snowed out i don't know if their gig was canceled or not i can't quite remember i'm sure jeremy remembers and uh yeah they they they, they just wanted to see if we happened to be here and they pulled through and you know you don't forget things like that and uh, we kept in touch from that point on he's this is just a really rad guy and i I really love that he's doing a label. I love how active Touche Moore is. Um, I was going to make sure to check him out when they play town. And uh, he's just an encyclopedia. He's a wealth of knowledge and such a supportive musician to other musicians. And uh, I just really admire the guy. It's really rad. So shout out, Jeremy, if you're watching. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me on Nardwar's Video Vault, Bobby. Coming up. You mentioned your wife. I see her in the background. Possibly she's going to hold your camera while you show and tell people about Devo. We got some Devo coming up. You're, are you still okay to <laughs> play some Devo for us? I've got a couple. I've got a couple minutes. <laughs> I got some energy left. <laughs> what are we going to see of the Devo variety that you're going to have uh, your wife hold the camera while you she's... demonstrate? Absolutely. Uh, it's a, uh, I'll show you exactly. It's a uh, it's part of the lifestyle that goes with Devo. We're going to listen to the Devo's corporate anthem, which is sort of a, a national anthem, if you will. Um, I brought in today my 
Japanese copy, but the, the Devo corporate anthem track one side A of Duty Now for the Future. Uh, that's my national anthem. And so if, we're gonna we're and, gonna <laughs> we're gonna do the national anthem. And I'm just gonna flash <laughs> right now here your if people want to get in contact with any records that have, they have seen or just they want to browse through your catalog, where can they contact? I'm, I've got this on the screen, but please explain. Absolutely. If you go to our Instagram, Vinyl Conflict is our Instagram. The email address is info at vinylconflict.com. If that's not working for some reason, because someone said that earlier, uh, you can email me at headcountrecords, H-E-A-D-C-O-U-N-T, headcountrecords at gmail.com. That will also eventually get to me too. And also Discogs, you have to join Discogs, but you can search before joining, right? Absolutely. And if you go to our Instagram page, we actually have a link to our Discogs page. Our username is Vinyl Conflict Records. And if you look up our user page, you can look at just specifically our catalog. And lastly here, Bobby, could you do a quick run through before we get to the Devo of the store? Just like if we walked in the door, because, you know, a lot of people have been at home. Oh, you know, like you said yeah, run through. Oh, no, I, I didn't mean literally. <laughs> but just quickly, oh my like, gosh. if somebody came in Hold the on. door, what would happen? <laughs> we have another. <laughs> I thought Our upstairs neighbor. Is it by appointment? Is it by, by appointment? Um, we were doing appointments. We're doing appointments in the mornings, um, from 11 to one. And then we're from one till seven. We're, uh, we're open now for capacity for masks required. Yeah. And feel free to get in touch with us first. We, we still offer private shopping appointments. So if somebody came in the door right now, can you just stand at the door and just go through the shop just to give people some idea of what they possibly have missed out all these months. Absolutely. You enter the shop to the left. We have our new arrivals rack. We have our wall of heat. This is all the rarest stuff we got in the shop. Uh, we have our new arrivals. This is the freshest stuff to come out. This is A through Z. New punk and indie. We didn't even get over here. This is A through Z metal and hardcore. This is my hip hop section. There's some hip hop singles. Uh, can you then, quickly go through the hip hop section? This quickly. Love to. Because you are very good with your hand, aren't you? Sure. This is a couple that I released. Let's see. Young Flex Co. Our upstairs neighbors outside now. Do we want to go bother them? Does she want to come in? We can go out. Oh, I think she's on a date. Oh, the refrigerator. You have the the fridge. The fr That's a sport yes. record. That's a sports there we record. Go. There we go. I've played that. $3. I've played that on the Nardwarder Human Survey at Video Vault. Cool. I like that one a lot. There's a signed one, blueprint, singles, and then just a whole bunch of singles. And then from here, there's the books, seven inch wall, used LPs, got the CDs and the tapes and the DVDs and the VHSs and the toys, <clears throat> my new license plate, thank you, soundtracks, disco, electro, synth. Jazz, country, classic rock, reggae, funk, soul, miscellaneous. Ooh, you probably want the miscellaneous section. And then more classic rock here, too. We'll go through some miscellaneous real quick. With a question from Easy Mode Tyler, who asks, who is Bobby's favorite Stafford band, and why is it High Priest? Oh, hi, Tyler. <laughs> uh, I'm so tired. I'm so sorry. I can't even answer. That. <laughs> I miss you, Tyler. Thanks for watching, man. I appreciate that big time. That's okay. But 
as well as your neighbor trying to get is your neighbor still trying to get in a store the upstairs I, I think they're outside we we can go harass them i think she's on a date but i don't care we can crash it uh, just quickly before you do the devo feel free to uh-huh if, where do you yeah, on the door yeah 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 hey do you want to say hi to uh, uh nardwar i'm talking to nardwar Hardware. Yeah. Oh shit! You're on the thing. You're yeah. on the thing. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> what can you say about Bobby? What can you say about vinyl <laughs> conflict? Yeah, yeah. I'm on a I'm on a live stream with Nardwar. Right <laughs> oh, I forgot about that. Yeah. Hello. Oh my Hi. god. What can you Hi. say? Hi. What can you say? I'm a huge fan. What can you I'm not say? Familiar, but I live upstairs. <laughs> what can you say about living above vinyl conflict? Earlier, they were blasting really weird organ music. Um, they're not really good neighbors. They're really rude. Um, <laughs> Bobby, like, tries to salesman me all the time. I don't know. I have way too many records now. I've never listened to music in my life. It's fascinating, <laughs> the neighborhood that Bobby is in. What's it like in the neighborhood? Like, you are living above a record store. Have you turned the neighbors into punks? This is quite amazing. Like, a punk store in a neighborhood. Like, is everybody a punk? Have you turned people punk? So, I think that the problem, I don't know. Well, like, living here is funny because the first thing we broke out on was like disco it wasn't punk at all like and so i'll come downstairs and shop the very small like country music section that he has or like the the like electronic music section um only recently have i i don't know slowly i'm assimilating to the punk record store thing but uh well how, how, did, how did you how did you guys meet bobby like you were living above a record shop that's amazing like was there much competition yeah, I, I, was there much competition to get that spot? Actually, not at all. It's so funny. It was on Craigslist. <laughs> <laughs> but I used to come here all the time before I lived in Richmond, so it's funny. And I didn't even know it was a vinyl conflict until I moved in. <laughs> what was the description on Craigslist? Uh, it was really horrible photos, which is why it stayed available for so long. Our landlord is, like, very much... <laughs> He's just, he's just an old fella who doesn't really know how to use the internet. So I think that's why I left out. He's probably watching this. We love you, Michael. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Muddle on, please. <laughs> but yeah, it's a, it's a good spot. I mostly, I don't really uh, listen. I don't really come downstairs to shop as often as I come downstairs to bum cigarettes from Bobby. I don't smoke, Mom. Um, um, I mean, from Chris and Eric. <laughs> it's so amazing that you guys are living above a record shop. I, I think it's so incredible. <laughs> like, it's amazing. And can um, Bobby just pan for a second to the rest of the neighborhood just to show what's, what is a neighborhood? What are the other show? What are the other buildings like? Amazing. It's completely residential. Yeah. <laughs> And Bobby, we are going for 24 hours on this stream, right? We're going for 24 hours, right? We've been talking since 7 p.m. Oh, really? I've been on this live stream since 7 Actually, my phone's almost dead. Whoa. Did you do the Devo thing earlier? Or did uh, no. Oh, well, 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 he was practicing the Devo thing. But maybe we'll... well. Um, could I talk to your roommates one more time? Or your... Res <laughs> your... your uh, the, the, do do loot do do, uh, do, do. Yeah! yeah. <laughs> thank you. Wow, thank you. <laughs> Later, y'all. Bye, y'all. And uh, Bobby, I guess we're time to um. You've been practicing this Devo thing with your wife, who I think is hiding in the back somewhere. Give her the phone, and maybe okay. we'll uh, allow you to do your Devo thing, which you've been practicing all day, right? All day. Yes. Anything you'd like to add to the people out there? If people want to contact you again, just go to the Insta Discogs page, right? Absolutely. Yeah. If you go to our website, vinylconflict.com, it has links to all of the different things we've talked about. We have a couple different web stores. Uh, the one web store that we aren't using very actively pretty much just has t-shirts in our shop releases. The other website is Discogs. That's the one we've been talking about all the whole time. If you don't see it on there, drop, drop us an email, uh, info at vinylconflict.com. 
And thank or you, headcountrecords.com. Thank you for finding out about me because it was you that DM'd me. You DM'd me. Oh yeah. I wanted to interview you. But how yeah. did you how did you find out about me? Nardwar? I'm sorry, you're famous, my man. <laughs> but how you're, did, you're like but what you're like inter- an icon. But, Your style of interview is so unique. Like it's just as being a music fanatic, I I just love watching all of your different videos. Uh, I found out about you. I think the first time I actually heard about you was from Alex D. Matessa from Grave Mistake Records here in Richmond. He showed me you probably about 10 years ago, and I've just been devouring it since. Oh, well, shout out oh. to Alex because he sent me some Coke Bust. Okay, cool. Because I think awesome. he released Coke Bust, didn't he? He did, but I actually also did a release for them as well. Mm-hmm. And then Big Eyes, Big Eyes. Did Big Eyes, correct, yes. Well, yeah, a whole ton of stuff. 86 Mentality, Nightbirds, Red Death, the list goes on. Well, thanks very much. Anything you want to add to the people out there at all, Bobby, from Vinyl Conflict Records? I want to thank everybody for all of your support, especially over the last year. Running an independent record store right now is really, it's gratifying and it's a tough thing because everybody's like always looking for something specific. And I think being a used vinyl shopper, you know, you find you find the, the thrill and the dig and being able to operate on a basis that's had such a wide support from people all over the world is really cool. It's really hard to keep up with an inventory that's ever changing. Vinyl's constantly in and out of press. Uh, I appreciate everybody's patience with everything. I appreciate everybody's interest, their questions, their understanding. Like we, we're, we're doing absolutely the best we can. Um, and yeah, not everything's always in stock. And, and I appreciate you for understanding that. Um, we try to ship out as fast as possible. Uh, yeah, man. Like, uh, I just thank you for everybody. Thank you for allowing this to be an operation. I think everybody who's, who, who knows who we are has ordered a record, follows us on Instagram or whatever. Like this is a, this is a tough time to be running a business and like your support does not go unnoticed. So thank you everybody. Even yours, Narvar. Thank you for bringing me on here. It means a lot. Well, thank you so much for taking the time. I really appreciate it. And if anybody sure. watching saw anything in Bobby's store that they liked, please jump over to the Discogs or the Insta and purchase it. And do check out the Insta and the Discogs. Just There might be something there if you type in the name, especially in Discogs, you can search for because there are such amazing treasures to be found there. And you are still going. Nobody has stopped you. We are still going. You're still going. The punk rock still rolls on. Still rolls on. I should should go do it. I should go do a DJ set after this somewhere. (laughs) 24 hour stream. Nardwar and Bobby at Nardwar's Video Vault. Well, Nardwar, th- when I come to Vancouver, can you set me up with a DJ gig? Definitely, definitely. Cool. Awesome. Uh, but right now, uh, you're okay to um, uh, uh, maybe you could hand your phone when you get a chance to your wife, yeah, yeah. and then um, we'll do the Devo thing if that's okay. Absolutely. And um, Bobby, keep on rocking in a free world and do do loot do do do. <laughs> Hey, it's Nardwar, the human serviette from Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada. And yes, you are still watching, I hope, Nardwar's Video Vault, which happens on Twitch every Friday at 3.30, every Monday at 3.30, 6.30 Eastern Time. Nardwar's Video Vault. To end Nardwar's Video Vault, I thought I would play some music for the people in Tweechland. And I have a couple of suggestions 
of stuff that I could play. One is a canary training record with organ and marimba accompaniment. Canary training record. And there is an ad for birdseed on the back. The human. And I wanted to play the song Dig It a Hole. Now you're wondering why the human? Well, 1987, Seattle, featuring Tom Price. And I began the show by playing my interview with Kurt Cobain, where I mentioned the human. So, a chance for you to hear the human featuring Tom Price of Gas Huffer. And I also interviewed Bobby of Vinyl Conflict Records from DC. And Rudy Petrudi used to play in the band Tina Peel. He later went on to form a band, The Fuzz Tones, with Deb O'Neill. And I was going to play the song Ward 81 by the Fuzz Stones. So, what do you guys want to hear? The Fuzz Tones record related to Bobby and Vinyl Conflict. The You Men record related to Kurt Cobain. Or the Canary Training record related to Nardwar the Human Serviette and Nardwar's Video Vault. And I will look at the chat right now and see what you would like to hear. I see one canary training and one fuzz tones and another canary training record and two human and another canary. Oh, canary is winning. The Canary Training Record, The Human, or The Fuzz Tones. Again, The Fuzz Tones, relating to my Bobby interview with Vinyl Conflict. Again, Rudy Petrudi of The Fuzz Tones. His first band was Tina Peel. So I thought that would tie in there, kind of. The Human were talked about in the interview with Kurt Cobain. And the Canary training record relates to Nardwar's video vault with organ and marimba accompaniment. Canary. Canary. Okay. Birds are the word. To end Nardwar's video vault, I'll step off stage and I'll step back on stage. Yes, it's Nardwar, the human serviette from Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada. Thank you so much for tuning in to Nardwar's Video Vault. Now, I have to clean this canary training record. And I think earlier you heard my record cleaner kind of like, was it eating into the record? I love the record cleaner that Bobby from Vinyl Conflict had. Amazing. It put what puts the Vaco wreck to shame. But I'll still try to use it. And then play the Canary Training Record on Nardwar's Video Vault. Do, 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 do.
I will clean a record now. So here we go to end Nardwar's Video Vault. A canary training record. Do 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 canary.